So the second option for two objects colliding with each other is instead of coming together as a single object uh, and then leaving the collision together, is if those two objects click together and bounce off each other undisturbed. So this type of collision, the elastic collision, is more like uh, two billiards balls clicking together on a pool table or when you throw a golf ball at the floor and it bounces, right? The ball and the floor don't fuse together as a single object. Um, they just click off each other and rebound reasonably un, um, undeformed. So we're gonna try and run through this math process using the same steps, um, but leaving Anne and Kevin as separate objects once they leave the collision. And as soon as we get to that step, you're gonna see immediately why that changes the mathematics of this particular thing. So, um, but let's just start as we normally did. I have Anne with a speed and a mass. So I'm gonna need Anne's momentum. And I'll get that by doing her mass multiplied by her velocity vector, which gives me uh, 210 comma zero. And I have a momentum vector for Kevin, which would be Kevin's mass multiplied by Kevin's velocity vector, uh, negative five because he's going that way, which gives me negative 210 comma zero. And if I were to get the total momentum then that I'm, I have available to work with, I would end up with 210, sorry, uh, four, 40 times five is 200. 210 minus 200 is 10 comma zero. Okay. Now I have gone back to a one dimensional problem here. Um, I think the lesson from two dimensions was that if you do two dimensional problems, you just have to do the problem twice, once in the horizontal and once in the vertical. And by the time we're done this one, you will not want to do this problem twice. So I'm just going to reduce this whole question down to a single dimensional problem by eliminating the y values entirely. So if there's no momentum up and down before the collision, then there'll be no momentum up and down after the collision. So I'm free to just eliminate those second coordinates. Okay, now what I did next in the inelastic collision circumstance was to say that this momentum on the way into the collision had to equal the momentum of Anne and the momentum of Kevin on the way out of the collision. Now you can see it's different already. In the, the inelastic question, Anne and Kevin were not separate objects when they left. They were a single thing with a single combined mass. When I try and write this one out, Anne's mass, or Anne's momentum, sorry, is 30 kilograms times whatever her speed is after the collision. And Kevin's momentum will be 40 kilograms times whatever Kevin's speed is. I have two variables because I have two objects. And that's different from what we were doing in the perfectly inelastic collision. The only way you can solve an equation that has two variables in it is to find a second equation that contains those same variables. So I'm going to have to think about something I can use from this information to find another quantity that is conserved and depends entirely on mass and speed. And the one that works is kinetic energy. So I'm going to, in addition to their momentum, calculate the kinetic energy of these two objects. So Anne's would be one half of Anne's mass multiplied by Anne's speed squared. So one half of 30 is 15. 15 times 49 is 735. Kevin's kinetic energy would be one half of 40 
Uh, his speed is negative 5 squared, but you notice that that's sort of irrelevant, because as soon as you square a negative, you get a positive number anyway. Half of 40 is 20, 5 squared is 25, for a total of 500, giving me a total kinetic energy of 1,235 joules. Okay. So I'm going to use that total amount of energy to try and construct an equation like this one where I use the total momentum. So this 1,235 joules, that's going to have to be enough energy to get Ann at 30 kilograms traveling at whatever speed she's going after the collision squared. And enough energy to pay for Kevin, who is 40 kilograms, to be traveling at whatever ca speed Kevin is going squared. So all I've done is kinetic energy before the collision has to equal the kinetic energy after the collision. The same way as I did momentum before equals the momentum after. Now I can take half of 30 and I can take half of 40. Uh, so 1235 is half of 30 is 15, and half of 40 is 20. All three of these numbers divide by 5, uh, so 1235 divided by 5 is 247. So do yourself a favor, reduce these numbers if you can. 15 divided by 5 is 3, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to choose to get VK squared by itself, which means I'm going to take this term and kick it to the other side. So subtract three VA squared equals four VK squared. Okay. So, now that I've manipulated this one, if I can manipulate this one to say 4vk squared equals, then I'll be able to hook this equation to this equation and solve for vA. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little work here. I notice that all three of these divide by 10, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, one equals three vA plus four vA. I'm going to kick this one over to the other side. 1 subtract 3VA is 4VK. And I'm going to square this side. So that means I need to square that side in order to get my VK squared. But you have to remember that when you square a binomial like this, that means this thing multiply by itself. 4 squared is 16, vk squared would be vk squared. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 vA. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 vA. Negative 3 vA times negative 3 vA is positive 9 vA squared. And if I collapse that, I get 1 minus 6 vA plus 9 VA squared equals 16 VK squared. Now, I didn't want 16, I wanted 4. So I have a choice. I could either divide this line by 4, which would give me a bunch of decimals, or I could multiply this by 4, which would not give me a bunch of decimals. So I'm going to choose that one. I'm going to do 247 times 4 gives me 988. 3 times 4 is 12, and now I have 16 VK squared. So what I have accomplished is an expression for VK squared, 16 VK squared, that I built entirely from kinetic energy. I have an equation for VK squared that I built entirely about, of mo about momentum. 
And if both of these things have to be true after the collision, then I'm going to be able to set this equal to that and solve for my VA. Uh, I'm going to need some space to do it, so I'm going to clean off the board, uh, everything but these, so that I can hook them together. Okay, so now that I've got some space, I'm going to take the expression I built purely from energy, 988 minus 12 VA squared. I'm going to set it equal to the equation I built entirely from momentum. This is 1 minus 6 VA plus 9 VA squared. Now that I have them written down, I don't need these anymore. Clean them off. So I've got some like terms up there. And I have a number with no VA attached there and there, so I'm going to bring them this over. I have a VA squared and a VA squared, so I'm going to bring those over. So what I end up with is 0 equals 1 subtract 988 minus 6VA plus 9VA squared uh, plus 12VA squared. Okay. So 0 equals 1 minus 988 is negative 987. Subtract 6VA plus 21VA squared. Now, if I'm lucky, 987 divides evenly by 3. So I'm going to try that. 987 divided by 3 equals 329. So I end up with, and, and I'm going to change the order a little bit. I'm going to write this thing first. This divided by 3 would be 7VA squared. This divided by 3 is uh, negative 2VA. And this divided by 3, what did I say that was? 329. Okay. So I have an equation that contains only VA. That's the speed of Anne as she leaves the the collision. Unfortunately that equation has a VA and a VA squared in it and the only way you can solve that is if you use quadratic formula. So I'm going to do that, launch into the two quadratic here. Uh, so VA would be negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So VA is going to equal negative negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times 7 times negative 329 over 2 times the a value which is 7 so VA will equal negative negative 2 is just 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 4 times 7 7 is 28 times 329 is 9212 and a negative times a negative is positive 9212 2 times 7 is 14 And 9,212 plus 4 is 9,216, all over 14. Now, I bet I'm going to square root that and get something truly heinous. Um, it's 96. Well, that's weird, right? Like, I had a whole bunch of numbers squiggling around here, and that's awful, and that's awful. And somehow, it managed to come together as a number that's a perfect square. Well, that's not an accident. Um, because of the symmetry of how this machine works, when you get to this stage, the number that's inside your square root must be a perfect square. Otherwise, you've made some sort of numerical error. So that's a good place to check. What I've got then is uh, that VA would be 2 plus or minus 96 over 14. So VA is either 2 plus 96 would be 98 over 14, or 
to subtract 96 would be negative 94 over 14. Therefore, VA is 98 divided by 14 is 7 or VA is 94 divided by 14 is 6.714 negative. So you set this problem up. Well, maybe I set this problem up. Okay, but <laughs> somebody set this problem up saying, I want to know when these two objects have exactly 10 kilogram meters per second of momentum, and I want to know when they have uh, 1,235 joules of kinetic energy. And you put that into this algebra machine, and it spat out two answers. One of them is this thing, and the other is 7, which happens to be the initial speed. So you asked the algebra universe which two velocities would give you momentum 10 and energy 1235 joules and it said well either the, the speed that she started with or the speed that she ends the collision with. So when you're doing all this and it's a big long problem you should get your initial speed as one of your answers and if you do you know you've done it correctly if this is the initial speed then this must be the final speed so I'm going to write it up there and then uh, erase that so it's not on my face anymore okay so after all that work we have a final speed for Anne as she leaves the collision she comes in at 7 meters per second headed this way and she bounces out at 6.714 meters per second that way. Well I wonder what happens to Kevin. So I need an equation that connects Anne's speed and Kevin's speed after the collision and I had this sitting up there from my momentum so I might as well use that. Uh, 10 equals 30 times and speed which is negative 6.714 plus 40 dk uh, 30 times 6.714 is 201.429 kick this to the other side would give me 211.429 and if I divide both sides by 40 then Kevin's speed should be 5.286 notice that it's positive so in what I've got worked out here is that Kevin was headed to the left originally at 5 meters per second after the collision is headed to the right at 5.286 meters per second so if you look at what's happened Anne has lost some of her kinetic energy and it has been transferred to Kevin so that Anne leaves the collision less quickly than Kevin uh, than she went in and Kevin leaves the collision more quickly than he went in. So now that this is done, you can maybe appreciate why we're not going to do it in two dimensions um, unless we really <laughs> feel keen to, because uh, it is a long process. But fortunately, there are two places that you can check along the way. One, your square root has to give you a perfect square. And two, your uh, two solutions for your variable have to be the initial speed and the final speed. So good luck with the practice questions. Uh, we'll see how it goes.